Well, let's return to politics now. And Jeremy Corbyn has today promised he'll do everything he can to stop a no-deal Brexit. It comes as Boris Johnson prepares to meet with EU leaders later this week to renegotiate the deal that's on offer. For more on this, I'm joined by Good of Fox reporter Tom Harwood and spokesperson for Our Future, Our Choice, Phoebe Potter. Tom and Phoebe, thanks so much for joining us. So Boris Johnson is off to meet Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron this week. How easy do you think that meeting is going to be, given what's happening at home? Phoebe. Uh, yeah, well, as we've seen today, we've had this report. The Yellowhammer report has been uh, has come out. It's been leaked, and it has laid out the absolutely devastating impact of what a No Deal Brexit could do to this country. It has talked about food shortages, fuel shortages, catastrophic delays at the Channel crossing, and perhaps most importantly, it is it is posed. It's talked about the the great threat posed um, to the Good Friday Agreement in the event of a No Deal Brexit, saying that a hard border could have to be uh, put in again in Northern Ireland. OK, Tom, um, I understand you're shaking your head. What do you think of that Operation Yellowhammer document? Well, this is a very old document. It's something that poses some of the risks that might come about and the solutions as to how to avoid them. What a lot of people are doing are reading the risks and they're not reading the solutions to those risks. The reason why Yellowhammer is an operation, the reason why the Cabinet Office is working on no-deal planning is to make sure those things don't come about. And they won't come about because we are preparing for them. And that means that, that we will have a much smoother exit. I agree with... Um, um, with some of the suggestions that if we were to leave immediately with no planning, with no with, with, with no sort of strategic operations, with no um, plan at all, then there could be problems. But the point is that we're assessing what those problems might be, planning for them so they don't happen. This seems to be a storm in a teacup because it's entirely out of date. The reason why Cabinet Office is doing this work is so that we will have a smooth exit on the 31st of October and then we'll be able to get on to the issues that really matter and start talking about healthcare and policing and everything that people in this country want to do and get past this Brexit quagmire that we've been stuck in. Phoebe, what do you think? Because Michael Gove came out and said, listen, it was an attempt in the past to work out what the very, very worst situation would be. Kwasi Kwarteng was on um, Sophie Ridge on Sunday. He said, listen, there's a lot of scaremongering, but we have to plan for a no deal. And Boris Johnson has said today in Cornwall, we're going to leave and we're going to be ready. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely wrong to say that this is an old report. Actually, the report was dated the 1st of August. That is less than three weeks away, three weeks ago, excuse me. Um, to suggest that, you know, things have changed so much in three weeks because of this war, you know, bunker mentality that Boris Johnson's put uh, his cabinet into and the preparations they have been supposedly put in um, to mitigate the devastating effects that are, have been laid out by this report. It was It's from three weeks ago. It was by the civil service, we're an impartial body, and they have suggested that there's going to be absolute devastation. Um, you can say we can try and mitigate the circumstances. There is very little we can do by the 31st of August um, to, to stop some of these devastations from happening. It was... Okay. It was, it Go ahead. Was, sure. Um, it, was, it was written before the Cabinet Office was up and running in terms of its no-deal operation uh, planning. And, and, and so, of course, it's going to raise some problems that might potentially come up, and it will also offer solutions. And I think a lot of people have ignored the solutions in that paper and ignored the work that's gone over, in, uh, over the course of the last month to stop those potential pitfalls. But also, I think what we should look at is the opportunities that arise on day one of leaving the European Union, the control that we'll gain over our trade, over our money, over our borders, over our laws. These are real tangible benefits that will come to the people of Britain. I mean, you talk about the control we might gain, the opportunities we might gain. It's actually, this report has made it very clear that we will not be gaining opportunities over our borders. What will lead to is huge delays at the Channel Crossing. It's saying that even in three months after, you know, maybe the worst effects are over, we will still only get back to 50 to 70 percent capacity that we originally uh, currently have at the Channel Crossing. You're, and you're looking at an old report based on a worst-case scenario. Ago. Based that on is a worst-case an scenario and with no planning. This will bear no reality to the situation that the country will actually face when we leave the European Union on the 31st of October. But also, let's crucially look at what's happening later in this week. The Prime Minister is meeting with uh, heads of state around Europe and making again the United Kingdom's position very, very clear. We will leave 
on the 31st of October, deal or no deal. We'd like a deal and we'd like the EU to stop being quite so intransigent in terms of their uh, blocking operation to stop no deal. It's very clear to, to stop uh, the UK leaving. It's very, very clear that no, that there, there is not a deal that includes the backstop that can pass through Parliament. If the European Union wants a deal, which it does, if the UK wants a deal, which it does, then the European Union will have to move. And their intransigence is really quite sad and political. And it's clear that they're not acting in the interests of the people of Europe and it's about time that they should. I mean, it's absolutely not true to say that EU is putting this intransigence on the UK um, and, and preventing us from leaving as a result. Things like the backstop are put in there to protect UK citizens. We actually saw a very recent poll saying that the majority of people in Northern Ireland are pro the backstop because it so, so crucially protects the border, um, the open border. It protects the Good Friday Agreement. And that is absolutely something that we should not be putting at risk and certainly not being putting at risk without going back to the people first to see whether they actually want to do it. <laughs> The backstop itself risks the Good Friday Agreement, which is based on absolute fundamental principles of the integrity of the United Kingdom. It's important that we look at this from both sides, and I think it's so, so sad when British people pop up on television and start spewing the EU's lines. This is a negotiation. One side says one thing, one side says the other, and it's profoundly damaging to the British national interest when Brits pop up on TV and start doing the EU's work for them. It's okay, about time that we all work together. Go ahead, Phoebe, and then I'm going to go, uh, jump in. Yeah, it's certainly not true that people are popping up and doing the EU's bidding. These are British people who have a right to have their say. If you're so worried and you so want to hear what British people actually have to say, there should be no fear in putting any deal against Remain back to the people in a referendum now that they have seen you the devastating impact. You simply wouldn't accept the results all over again. We've seen Caroline Lucas, we've seen Joe Swinson, we've seen all the people on your side saying that if there were a second referendum and leave one again, they still wouldn't accept it. How many I, more referendums do we have to have to finally uh, have the will of the people respected that's in this completely country? Not, that's completely not true if people said we, can, we won't, won't accept it. Actually, it could be... if It's a, what we, it is a different referendum to 2016. What, oh, we are sure. trying to put yeah. to the, what we are trying to put to the people is real-life oh. solutions with, which we have actually negotiated with the EU, not an abstract concept of leave, versus the deal we currently have, and to try and see whether the people still want that. No now, one we are far buys away this transparent attempt to try and undo the last referendum. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to jump in there. Um let's talk pick up on the second referendum. Um the people's vote. Uh, specifically what Jeremy Corbyn was saying. He's saying um speaking earlier today that Labour is going to do everything necessary to stop what he said is a disastrous no deal of which this government has no mandate. Tom, what do you think about that? Well, Jeremy Corbyn voted to make no deal the legal default for this country when he voted to trigger Article 50, when actually the day after the referendum he said we should immediately trigger Article 50. Jeremy Corbyn is someone with a long track record of opposing the European Union, of actually opposing second referendums. He's on video sort of making light of the fact that the EU came and forced the Irish to vote again on the Lisbon Treaty. This is someone who has been actually browbeaten by a part of his party into turning around and, 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 and uh, supporting a second referendum finally. This is not a leader. This is someone who has been absolutely pushed and pulled in every direction on this issue. And it, I think it's a bit silly that we're all sort of starting to listen to what he has to say because we don't know what his position will be one day to the next. Really, what's clear is the legal default is we will be leaving on the 31st of October. And there's very little that Parliament can do to frustrate that. They'll try very hard and the Labour Party will try very hard to cancel the votes of millions of people up and down this country. But ultimately, they will fail. What Jeremy Corbyn has made very clear, which is absolutely right, is that it is completely unacceptable now that we have seen the devastation that No Deal could do to the country to try and force No Deal on the British people when there is no mandate for it amongst the public. And what must be done is there must be an extension secured so that a poll can go back to the British people. Now, that should be through a referendum, which is the quickest and swiftest way to draw a solution to this Brexit crisis and the... And the the, this, how it's stuck in Parliament, the quickest way is to give that back to the people. It could also be done through a general election, and Jeremy Corbyn, I'm pleased to say, has been very clear that he would then be campaigning for a second referendum, along with most of the other opposition parties uh, in that general election. But ultimately, it has to be put back to the people. We okay. all know it's not a solution because we all know that this Parliament Tom, I'm does so not sorry, like Tom. Brexit and won't accept it. Tom, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to leave it there. Tom and Phoebe, really, really thanks a lot for talking to us this afternoon. Thank you.